Hi everyone, we're going to continue our discussion about Lewis structures and drawing Lewis structures for covalent molecules by discussing a concept known as electronegativity. So electronegativity is the ability of an element to attract electron to itself in a covalent bond. What does that mean? If you look at a molecule like water, you notice that there is a sharing of electrons between hydrogen and oxygen. Well, it turns out that that sharing is not always equal, meaning that the electrons between oxygen and hydrogen is more pulled towards the oxygen than it is to the hydrogen. So that ability to attract electron to itself in that covalent bond is what we refer to as electronegativity. So to know which element has a higher or lower electronegativity, we look at the trend, which is given in this format of the periodic table. So electronegativity increases as it goes from left to right and bottom to top. So it has this pattern of increasing electronegativity. So in this case, if you look at the bond between oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen is right here, hydrogen is right here. So oxygen is going to be more electronegative than hydrogen. And therefore, in the bond between hydrogen and oxygen, the electron is going to be more pulled towards the oxygen. So if you imagine that there is electrons that's being shared, by oxygen and hydrogen, that electron is going to be mostly on the oxygen side and less on the hydrogen side. So more of the electron cloud would be located near the oxygen. Now this actually results in different types of covalent bonds based on the electronegativity of the two elements that are being bonded together. If the electronegativity difference, which we call delta En, is between 0 to 0.4, then we would call that a pure covalent bond or a nonpolar covalent bond. As illustrated in this drawing, the electrons that are being shared by those two elements are being shared pretty uniformly across the two elements. So nobody has a claim on that electron. However, if the electronegativity difference or the delta En is higher than 0.4 all the way to 2, then that sharing is going to be unequal. So one element is going to have more electrons, the other element is going to have less of the electron that's being shared. That bond is now called a polar covalent bond. The reason it's called polar is because you have two poles of in the bond. One side gets more electron, then it becomes more negative. So we give it a symbol delta negative. The other side, relatively speaking, gets less electron. It is effectively less negative or more positive. So we give it a symbol delta positive. Okay, so this is called a polar covalent bond and this one is called a nonpolar covalent bond. So the way you tell is by looking at the difference in electronegativity. So an example of a table with values of electronegativity is shown right here. So you can see that fluorine has a value of 4, hydrogen has a value of 2.1. So if I have a bond between fluorine and hydrogen, the electronegativity values is 4 and 2.1. So if I calculate the delta En of this bond, it's just going to be 4 minus 2.1, which is 1.9. Remember that as long as it's between 0 and 0.4, it's nonpolar. But then if it's greater than 0.4 up to 2.0, then that's polar. This bond right here between H and F is going to be considered a polar bond. Okay, so you can actually use this table of electronegativity values to figure out whether a bond is polar or nonpolar, just like the example of HF. So just a reminder again of the criteria for determining whether it's polar or nonpolar, as long as it's 0.4 or below, you would call it nonpolar. And this one still says 0.4, but it means greater than 0.4. So the way you can think about it is between 0.5 to 2, then it's going to be polar covalent bond. Okay. If you look at I and I, you know that the delta En or the difference in electronegativity is going to be zero because it's the same electronegativity value. And as a result, this bond is going to be nonpolar. If I look at CS and BR, you don't actually need to think about the type of covalent bond because CS is a metal and BR is a nonmetal. So in this case, automatically you would consider this an ionic bond. You don't need to look at electronegativity to think about 
about what kind of bond you have here. Now P and O, we're going to need to look at electronegativity. So P has an electronegativity of 2.1 from that table, and oxygen, which is right here on the top, has an electronegativity value of 3.5. So if you subtract 3.5 and 2.1, you end up getting 1.4, and of course that tells you that that's a polar bond.